Hi there, and welcome to BAST. This is my first tech talk, so I got to find out a couple of things and what works best. But the subject is an interesting matter, and I had quite some issues finding out how to work it. So I thought I'd share it, and here it goes. Today's topic is about squaring your y-axis on your CNC machine. In my case, we're talking about the Red Rig Killer B CNC, which is based on the open builds principle. So any CNC machine based on that same principle should work. My controller is a Spark Concept X-Pro V5, which has the possibility to address four axes. X, Y, Z and a Y tube. The firmware I'm using is linked in the video description below. This firmware is an XYYZ setup, which means that when you send a command to move the Y axis, it actually moves Y1 and Y2 together. On to the Y. Why is it useful to square your axis? When you were building up your CNC machine, probably you've spent a couple of hours trying to get everything square and straight and moving smoothly as possible. So your machine is square, why do you need squaring? Remember when I said X, Y, Y, Z, and that when you move the Y axis, it actually moves Y1 and Y2? Well, sometimes it doesn't or something else goes wrong. This can be a slip of the motor, uh, someone bumped to your machine or whatever. And this means that Y1 and Y2 may think that they are on the same spot, but in fact they are not. And when your machine is out of square, you cannot create squares. A 90 degree angle will be less or more and therefore less precise. If you're only doing artwork, it doesn't matter that much, you might not notice it. But when you have to create parts that have to fit together, they will probably not fit as snug as you intended them to be. And isn't that why we bought a CNC machine? To stop those uh, errors from happening? But it's deeper than that. You also create tension in your frame. And tension in your frame creates extra friction, which in turn leads to extra wear and even damage. If you have V-rollers, you have to replace them earlier than you expect. But when you have linear rails, this becomes much harder, much more difficult and even more expensive. Replacing a slider is a hassle, but if the wear is big enough, you might even have to replace your entire rail. That's a hassle and pretty expensive. Okay, so now what's actually different? Well, every CNC job starts with a normal homing cycle. We will skip the X and the Z axis for now, and we will focus on the Y axis. When you start a homing sequence, the Y motors spin up and drive the X gantry towards the Y limit switch. The limit switch gets triggered, the motors stop, and the controller knows exactly where the gantry is and how far it can move. The new setup is with an extra limit switch, which functions as the second Y stop. This is just the same limit switch as the regular open build limit switches. The tricky part for the X-Pro V5 is that you have four places for a limit switch, but you actually have to place both limit switches into the Y1 limit switch. I cannot explain why this is the case, but this is the case. And this is actually one of the main reasons that I decided to make this video, because the information is not widely available. So for the squaring, which is actually incorporated in the Y homing procedure. And it's not in the general X, Y, Z homing. So we will ignore the X and the Z motors for now. 
and of course squaring is best visible when the X gantry is out of square. So we will give the X gantry a little twist to show it better. Triggering the Y axis homing goes with $HY enter from the console, which like before spins up the Y motors and moves the X gantry towards the limit switch. And like before, the limit switch gets triggered. But this time it's a bit different because the system doesn't know which of the two limit switches went off. How does it know what to do? Well, it's pretty easy actually. Both motors spin up and back off a little bit. Then only motor one spins up until it reaches the limit switch. Since both limit switches are wired to the same port on the controller, both switches are triggered. But since only motor one was spinning, the controller now knows exactly where position one is. Motor one is then backed off for five millimeters. Motor one stops, motor two moves forward again until it reaches the limit switch. Like before, both are triggered, but since only motor 2 is spinning, it knows now exactly where motor 2 is. Motor 2 is backed off the same 5 millimeters, and now we're square. That's the theory. How does it work in practice? We will start with installing the extra limit switch. I use the open builds limit switch and I modified an existing limit switch mount which was made by someone in the Radrick user group on Facebook. I will explain why. Radrick limit switch mounts are quite small and flimsy and still keep a lot of flexibility and movement on your limit switch. Of course it's not screwed down now but you see there are plenty of positions you can keep it in. If I remove the switch, you can see that even with the screw tied down, there's still quite some flex. So let's remove it. The new mount has a better grip on the extrusion and it has edges to mount the switch against. Also, it has room for tie wraps. When we mount this one, it's a lot more sturdy. And when I place the limit switch, it's held in the corner and has no way to move. When we need to move the mount, we can easily reach the screw, which moves the entire mount while keeping the switch firmly in position. There are actually two mounts because the other side is a mirrored version of it and you can download them in the link in the description below. Now on to the controller. Like I said before, the A slash Y2 has its own limit switch port, but we do not use it. We use both switches in the same Y port. For now I have disconnected the X and the Z limit switch but of course they need to be installed as well. To combine the two limit switches, I use a simple block and then one normal plug. And that one is plugged in to the Y limit switch port. When you start up your controller, after you've made sure you've attached every cable and limit switch you need to install, there's actually just one line that you need to enter to configure squaring your axis. And that is homing slash squared equals Y. Press enter, the system will say OK, and now it's configured. 
when you do a normal homing cycle, the normal homing will occur and when you press home Y or type into console dollar H Y and enter, then you will trigger the squaring cycle. Okay, so we've installed the limit switches, we've configured the controller, we've run the squaring sequence. Are we done now? Unfortunately, no. Now we got to measure, because we don't know what square is. So we need to measure the distance of the gantry to the end plate. On my Y1 motor it's about 3 cm and on the other side it's about 2.8. Both my limit switches are mounted directly at the plate, so this seems a bit strange, but I've discovered that the arms of my limit switches are not shaped the same way, and this is probably just a factory margin of error or whatever. It doesn't matter if you have one switch, but if you have two switches, they need to be the same. So time to move. And this is why my designed limit switch mount is so easy, because if you have to move, you need to be sure that everything moves in the same way. And with just one screw, you can adjust it forward and backwards. Then you run the squaring cycle again and rinse and repeat until it's as close as you can get it to get it square. It took me about five or six tries to get it uh, just uh, right. So don't be discouraged if you can succeed at once. Well, that's it for uh, squaring your axis. And also for my first tech talk, I had fun making it, although it wasn't as easy as I expected it to be. As a Dutchie speaking in English uh, can be difficult at times. And I noticed my audio setup leaves some room for improvement. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and maybe see you in the next one.